Hello everyone and welcome to another video and in this one we're going to talk about how we can calculate the charge of peptide at a certain pH. So we're going to subject a peptide into a certain pH and we're going to look at the overall charge, how it is changing the overall charge. So before that I have already done a video on titration curve on titration curve of amino acid. If you haven't watched it, please do watch it. It will be linked down in the description. And uh, there you would get the concept of pKa and how the charge is changing on a particular amino acid with increasing pH. So this pKa concept is very important for that. Now, before we start, let me give you a quick reminder of the pKa and pH relation. If an amino acid is put in a pH which is less than that of the pKa, then there would be protonation. There would be protonation. That is, the amino acid would take up hydrogen ions from the solution. If the amino acid is put in a pH which is greater than the pKa of a particular group, then there would be the opposite thing that is deprotonation. That is the amino acid group would the ionizable hydrogen containing group that would tend to release its hydrogen ion. And if the pH in which the amino acid is put is equal to that of the pKa, then there would be half protonation and half deprotonation. So these three cases are very important when we are solving the questions. Now let's take an example. Let's say you're given with a dipeptide which is glycine and aspartic acid. These two amino acids are bound together by a peptide bond. And uh, you have the alpha amine group of glycine on one side and the CWH or the carboxyl group or the alpha carboxyl group of aspartic acid on the other side. But the alpha carboxyl group of glycine and the alpha amine group of aspartic acid is present in this peptide bond. So that is forming the bond and one more thing you would be given in the question that is the pKa values for the various groups. So the pKa of alpha amino group is 10, the pKa for the alpha carboxylic group which is 2 and the pKa for the R group is 4, right? So now the question is what would be the overall charge, what would be the overall charge uh, when this dipeptide, this dipeptide is subjected to a pH of 8 and also what would be the overall charge if the dipeptide is subjected to a pH of 4. So how are we supposed to do this? How are we supposed to find out the overall charge? So first let's do it for the pH of 8. What we have, we have glycine, we have aspartic acid, the alpha amine group of glycine is there, the alpha carboxylic group of aspartic acid is there. We know that the aspartic acid is having an R group and the pKa of the R group is given, 4. So we're going to go one group at a time and we're going to check whether there is protonation or deprotonation of that group. Like for example, if we are subjecting this uh, dipeptide to a pH of 8, the alpha amine group has got a pKa of 10. Now since it has got a pKa of 10, 
we can say that the pH is less than the pKa because it is subject it is getting subjected to a pH of 8 but it is having a pKa of 10 the alpha amine group so like we said if the pH is less than the pKa there would be protonation so over here it would be protonation and since protonation would be there there would be an increase of charge by plus one so we can say a proton is getting added to this group and hence the charge would be plus one it would be getting converted to NH3 plus and one more thing if the question is not saying anything about the peptide being ionized or not we do not take the peptide to be ionized only if the question is saying the peptide is in ionized form then only we can start with a peptide which is having an H3 plus or C double O minus but since the question is not saying that the peptide is ionized we are not going to put any additional charge on this peptide right so the first group would be protonated hence plus one next we go to this group the alpha carboxylic group the alpha carboxylic group is having a pKa of 2 now the pH is 8 and hence the pH is greater than the pKa because the pKa is 2 and the pH is 8 right so for this one it would be deprotonated and since it would be deprotonated that is this hydrogen ion would be released and hence the deprotonation would give rise to a charge of negative one so we are done with we are done with this group that is the alpha carboxylic group and the alpha amino group the last group that remains is the R group the R group has a pKa of 4 again the pH is 8 at which we are subjecting the amino acid or the dipeptide and it is greater than the pKa which is 4 again since the pH is greater than the pKa it would tend to deprotonate and we're going to get again a negative one charge so the R group would release an H plus and we're going to get a negative one for that as well so we have one positive charge on this one we have one negative charge for this one and finally another negative charge for this one and hence if we add that up plus one plus minus one plus minus one this plus one and minus one gets cancelled and we are left with an overall charge of minus one so this is how we can calculate the charge okay let's do it for pH of four the second part so pH of four so for pH of four let's draw it again we have glycine we have the alpha amine group the peptide bond the aspartic acid the alpha carboxylic group and the R group on the aspartic acid now we are again going to go over the whole dipeptide one by one selecting one group at a time and we're going to calculate the charge on that the alpha amine group has got a pKa of 10 and since the pH at which we are subjecting the dipeptide is less than the pKa therefore it would tend to protonate once again
tend to protonate. And since it is protonating, it would be taking in an hydrogen ion and this hydrogen ion would give it a charge of plus one. Next, we go to this group, the alpha carboxylic group. It has got a pKa of two. So the pH, the pH at which we are subjecting it is four and hence the pH is greater than the pKa, right? So for this one, for this one, it would tend to release a hydrogen ion and hence it would be deprotonated. Since it is deprotonating, it is releasing a hydrogen ion, hence it would have a negative one charge. The final one, we are subjecting the dipeptide to a pH of four and the pKa of the R group, the pKa of the R group is four as well. We are subjecting it to this pH, which is four, and the pKa is also four. Now in this case, what I have already said, that there would be half protonation and half deprotonation. Now this R group, since I said it is not ionized already, it is not ionized already, it would have CWOH intact. Now, since CWOH is already having this hydrogen, it cannot take up any more hydrogen, right? It cannot take up any more hydrogen. So, on the contrary, what it can do, it can give out this hydrogen. So we are not having any protonation, but we can have a deprotonation. And that deprotonation, that deprotonation would be minus half. Because I said, if the pH is equal to the pKa, then there would be half protonation and half deprotonation. But in this case, we cannot have any more hydrogen ions pushed into this group because it is already having the maximum capacity of hydrogen ions. Well, what we can do, we can deprotonate it. And since we are half deprotonating it, we are having minus half. So now the total charge would be plus one, plus minus one, plus minus half. This get cancelled and the overall charge would be negative half. So this is how we can calculate the overall charge of a peptide in a certain pH. And we can take out the hydrogen ions or put in the hydrogen ions and come to a conclusion what can be the complete charge of that molecule.